So blood sugar spikes are related to all kinds of different problems. And in both of your books, actually, I think you've beautifully outlined why this approach is relevant for everyone. And I mean everyone. Now, I know your approach is not focused on weight loss, yet I think what's going to happen with most people is if they stabilize their blood sugar, excess weight is going to start coming off as a side effect rather than as the primary focus. And the reason I bring weight loss up is because I know that's not what you're, I know your approach is not about weight loss. But of course, many people do want to lose weight. Of course. And so I think it's important to address that. I guess what I'm trying to get to, Jesse, because I really want people to hear this conversation and start making changes in their life, right? And we can talk about risk of type 2 diabetes in the future, risk of cancer, risk of dementia. But, you know, for many of us, that's a doesn't land. We want something that's going to make us feel good. We want to have more energy, fewer cravings, yeah. feel good, sleep better, have better skin. And what's cool about the glucose hacks is that they affect you both right now and they help you feel good today and they prevent yeah. long-term disease. They're the same thing. But listen, I completely agree. If you tell somebody, do this to prevent type 2 diabetes, pff, nobody's going to do it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's just your, your human brain is not wired to comprehend that. And so it's easier to think about, I'm going to feel way better this afternoon if I eat my breakfast this way. And on the topic of weight loss. So yes, you know, I just want to differentiate my work from like the big diet industry telling you, you know, just eat cabbage for a week and lose 20 pounds. What I'm talking about here is health. But as you mentioned, weight loss is often a consequence because when we study our glucose levels, three things happen. Number one, our cravings go away. Mm -hmm. Number two, hunger reduces. Number three, our insulin levels reduce as well, which allows us to be in fat burning mode more often. And to give you a statistic, in my pilot experiment for my second book, 40% of people who wanted to lose weight did in fact lose weight in these four weeks without restricting anything, just mm -hmm. because of the natural consequence of studying your, your glucose levels. Yeah. You mentioned insulin there. Mm -hmm. And I know when you explain why this matters to people, you often talk about mitochondria, glycation, and insulin. Yeah. And I think just getting that scientific understanding for people, I think would really help ground them and really help them understand why this is important. So could you explain how these three things get affected? I particularly like glycation because I think <laughs> when people hear that, they get, in fact, maybe let's start with glycation. Yeah. What is it? Because this is going to move the needle for people straight away. For sure. So I explained what glucose is and what a glucose spike is, which is a rapid increase in blood sugar after eating. And the spikes have three main consequences that then lead to symptoms. So consequence one, glycation. Glycation is a process that happens in your body from the moment you are born. And it's kind of like cooking. So when you put a chicken in yeah. the oven and it goes from being pink to being cooked, it has glycated. A human being cooks from the moment they're born until they die. And in fact, when they're fully cooked, that's when they die. So you're cooking, okay? And this cooking is also leading to aging. Cooking is like aging. Glycation is like aging. You can't stop aging, but you can slow it down or speed it up. Now, the more glucose spikes you have in your body, especially if they come from sweet foods, the faster glycation happens, the faster you age. And this shows externally, like the more wrinkles you get, but also internally, your organs are slowly going to start to deteriorate and become less healthy. So glycation is so connected to glucose that there's actually a very well-known test among people with type 2 diabetes called the HbA1c test, which actually measures the glycation of your red blood cells. Yeah. So glucose causes glycation. Glycation is aging. Glucose spikes increase, well, speed up this process. That's one of the, <laughs> one of the yeah, things but that, that happens. This is a really important one because we get it when you talk about chicken browning or, I don't know, making a creme brulee. Mm -hmm. right? You know, we, we, we know what that yeah. looks like. But that's kind of what's happening. It actually to happens us. inside. So when scientists look at the cartilage of babies, like on the inside of their body, it's white. And by the time you're 90 years old, the cartilage is brown. Like you're actually cooking. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but scientifically, it's completely true. You're glycating. Yeah. And this whole glycation piece is that we could be going on our life with a bit of low grade fatigue, having a bit of sugar at 11 and at 3 p.m. to get us through a bit more caffeine 
not realizing that actually those are likely to be symptoms of blood sugar dysregulation. Yep. And by doing that, by having that blood sugar dysregulation, we're probably aging inside. Or we feel like it's normal. We I used to normal. think it's it was totally normal to be famished at 11.30 a.m. and exhausted at 3 p.m. I just thought, you know, because everybody around us feels that way. Mm. So you just have in your psyche that it's normal to not feel great. But in most of us, those symptoms can be linked back to these glucose spikes. And when you flatten your curves, like it really feels like you're having a completely new experience of your life and of your days. It's it's transformative. And those symptoms, you don't have to live with them. Yeah, that's, you know, I know a lot about a good healthy diet, but wearing one for me and, and tweaking a few things and using a lot of the hacks that you're talking mm -hmm. about and you write about, on those days where your blood sugar yeah. is stable, you have a different experience of life. Yes. You can have a, a clarity, like a almost like a steady supply of energy. Yeah, like eagle energy. Yeah. It's yeah. it's quite incredible, really. Yeah. And you go, wow, I I was eating so-called healthy foods two weeks ago yeah. and my sugar was going up and down. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was doing okay. And for me, I think this is a key point. You explain your story and how when you started wearing a CGM you started to connect the dots yeah. between how you were feeling and what your blood sugar is doing. I think that's really, really powerful. Yes. And to be clear, like I did that and it was incredibly informative and allowed me to become fascinated with the science. I think you can very easily see all the impact of mm. the hacks on your life without needing to wear a CGM. You know, you know yourself. You know if you used to be tired all the time and now you're not tired anymore. You know if resisting a cookie was like, you know, the bane of your existence and now you don't even want the cookie anymore. You know if you sleep better. You know if your period is back. You know if like your mental health is better. Like you don't need to wear the CGM. That's also the beauty of it all. You can reconnect with yourself, without yeah. the device. You, you've done a lot of the testing and- Yeah, and so what I do with my CGM data is that I illustrate the scientific studies. So for example, yeah. if I find a study that says, oh, we found at scale that one tablespoon of vinegar before a meal reduces the glucose spike of the meal. My work as a science educator, because I'm not, I'm not a doctor, you know, I'm really just here to teach and communicate and vulgarize the science. I think, okay, I want people to know about this scientific paper, but I need to illustrate it in a way that is approachable and understandable. So I create my glucose graphs yeah. just to show. And then if you swipe on my Instagram post, for example, you see this study that I reference. I think the way you illustrate that data is so clever. And, you know, when someone like yourself starts an Instagram account and blows up that quickly, you know, you're really hitting on something. You're you're able to articulate an idea in a very simple way that connects immediately with a lot of people. And I, and I think that skill is very much undervalued. So I, you know, I want to sort of say it's very much appreciated Thanks. how well you do that. There's a layer missing between the scientific studies and the public. And I mean, you're part of that layer, of course, but we need more people who are here to communicate the science, make it understandable, to teach. And I'm so happy to be able to bring these amazing discoveries done by amazing research teams across the world to my readers and my audience. Back to the three things, <laughs> yes. right? So, so uh, we had glycation. We had glycation. And we also have... No one wants to be cooked. glycating and cooking their internal and the wrinkles. organs. Yeah, we don't want the wrinkles. And again, that's like a very short-term benefit. But, but it's, hey, it's a benefit that a lot of us want, right? Whether absolutely. whether we whether we are willing to accept our vanity publicly or not, yeah. most of us will probably say, yeah, I want less wrinkles. Yeah. I would like to age more slowly exactly. than I currently am. But the good news is the hacks will help with that and also long-term exactly. prevention. So there are three things that happen in our body when we have a glucose spike. The first one is glycation, the cooking, like the chicken in the oven. The second one is your mitochondria get stressed out. And the third one is insulin. So I'll explain the two, the two, the two last ones, the second and third one. So your mitochondria, they are these little machines inside of your cells that are in charge of turning glucose into energy. So mm. they're amazing and we need them. And the better they function, the more energy we have. Your mitochondria, when you're giving them a steady supply of glucose, they're quite happy. They're like, okay, I can deal with this. Mm. I'm making energy, no problem. When you deliver a glucose spike to them, they 
stress out. They freak out, like in the Tetris example, like the mm. blocks are coming down too quickly. They just quit um, and they don't function well anymore. And as a result, that can lead to chronic fatigue because your mitochondria are just not working as well as they could be. Your mitochondria becoming stressed out also leads to what's called oxidative stress and inflammation. And inflammation in our body is one of the biggest killers. Yeah. We know that three out of five people in the world will die of an inflammation-based disease. And even if you have things like psoriasis, eczema, which are inflammation-based diseases, the more glucose spikes you have, the worse those symptoms are going to get. So that's mitochondria. You get tired. You get cooked and you get tired. Can I just pause you there? Because it was so fascinating that. And I just want to draw a connection there just to make sure people have got that. You were talking about fatigue. So most people are under the impression that if I want to increase my energy, having more sugar is going to help me do that. Yet you're saying glucose spikes are... Harming your body's long-term ability to make energy. Yeah. So just let's, can we just make that super clear for we people? Can. So when you eat something sweet, what's happening is you're getting a dopamine release in your brain. There's a yeah. pleasure hormone molecule that gets released in your brain. And that pleasure can feel like energy. You feel perked up. You feel like, whoa, I feel awake. That's not energy. That's dopamine. Mm. On the inside, in your mitochondria, the Ability for your body to make energy is getting reduced. You're getting less and less good at making energy. Yet, you might think, oh my God, I need more and more sugar to wake myself up, more and more caffeine. And so you have this impression of like the dopamine rush, and then on the inside, things are breaking down. If you actually want to allow your body to make energy like it was always supposed to make it, which is efficiently, beautifully, easily, you have to reduce the glucose spikes and you have to work with your mitochondria. Your mitochondria just want you to have a great time. They just yeah. want to give you all the energy in the world. So we need to work with them because they're so powerful. And when you steady your glucose levels, you give them back that power to give you the energy that you really want. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about the hacks as well is that I'm not asking you to never eat sugar ever again. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching you how to eat it in a way that gives you all the pleasure, all the dopamine, but with less impact on your glycation, on your mitochondria, and on your health. That's why it's so powerful. We're going to get to some of those really, yeah. really shortly. Okay, so super clear on mitochondria. Uh, insulin. Yeah. So your body knows that glucose spikes are not good for it. And it's trying to reduce the glycation and the mitochondrial overload. And it has one little tool that it uses. Your pancreas releases insulin into your body when a glucose spike is happening. And insulin is amazing. Her job is to take excess glucose out of the circulation and to store it away mm -hmm. in places where it can no longer do harm. And insulin stores glucose away in your muscles, in your liver, and also in your fat cells. And that's one of the ways that we gain weight or fat on our body is by our body putting glucose away into our fat cells. Now, the problem is too much insulin over time also has consequences. The most common one being insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, but also something that's becoming more and more common in females, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome or fertility problems. The more insulin you have in a female body, the more your body is going to produce testosterone. Mm -hmm. That means in a female body, you're going to have this excess of male hormone. This leads to consequences. Missed periods, cystic ovaries, infertility, acne, balding, hair growth on the on the face, etc. Yeah. And often, and I'll just do a little PCOS sidebar here, often um, the way that PCOS is treated is by giving females the birth control pill because the pill contains female hormones. And so when you ingest female hormones with the pill, you're kind of bringing back the balance between female and male mm -hmm. hormones. But then when you stop the pill, if you haven't addressed the underlying issue, the problem is still there. And so you see many people who go off the pill because they want to have a baby and then they stop the pill and they're like, oh my God, I don't have my period. Yeah, What's happening? I'm not ovulating. And that's often a sign of this excess insulin. And so that's why one of the most common things that I see in my readers is getting their period back. And in my pilot experiment for the glucose goddess method, three women who had been told they were never going to be able to have babies naturally got pregnant in those four weeks. Wow. It's really, really powerful that. Because again, it speaks to this idea, are we treating symptoms 
or dealing with the root cause. And I've seen the picture you just uh, illustrated there play out with so many women with PCOS in practice in the past. I really have. I've seen it so many times. And, you know, those symptoms, I can think back to certain patients. They are so distressing for women. You know, yes, not being able to get pregnant. Sure, that that is clearly a massive thing. But, you know, if you're a woman and you've got facial hair, or you become you're, or you're, you're going bald or yeah. really thinning hair. Yeah. And one of my big frustrations in medicine is that we are not really taught to go for that root cause. And I think, again, broadening out the lens on blood sugar, if I think about, and you, you do this in both books actually really well at the start about really clearly demonstrating why this book and this approach is relevant to all of us. Mm -hmm. You mentioned infertility, you mentioned PCOS, you mentioned menopausal symptoms. Mm -hmm. Right? The menopause is something that is talked about a lot these days. It's one of the hot topics in health. And I understand why, because for many years, um, nobody a lot was of, talking about a lot it. of women don't feel it was taken seriously. A lot of women feel as though they were ignored by their doctors, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But you're also showing how stabilizing your blood sugar can lead to an improvement in menopausal symptoms. Listen, the scientific studies are very clear. The yeah. more glucose spikes you have, the more insulin you have, the worse your menopause symptoms whether it's hot flashes, insomnia, et cetera. Like your hormonal system cannot function properly if your glucose and your insulin are out of whack. It's just the hormonal axis is not going to work if you're on a glucose roller coaster. And this is true for menopause symptoms, for PCOS, for PMS. So, yeah. you know, the premenstrual syndrome, endometriosis, fibroids, everything that's hormonally linked will get better when you study your glucose and insulin levels. It is truly the foundation of hormonal health is to have steady, balanced blood sugar. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty incredible. And I think, I don't know how you view this, Jesse. When I would talk to patients about blood sugar roller coasters, and I'd often draw them a graph. Yeah. You know, in a 10 minute consultation, I'd sit there and say, look, and I'd, I'd just grab a piece of paper, you know, and I'd literally draw it out and I'd explain it. This time you're having this food, right? This is what's happening to your blood sugar. And then maybe two hours later, after it's high, it's coming down, it's crashing. And sometimes if you've been doing this for a while, it will overshoot. And mm -hmm. one thing I would often say is that this is not just a blood sugar problem at that point. It's also a hunger problem. It's also a stress on the body. Yep. What if you could speak to that? Because I think that, for me at least, that really landed with patients. Your blood sugar falling rapidly is a stressor. Absolutely. So I actually just did a live with an amazing um, woman, Aviva Ram, who's really oh, specialized brilliant. in this, uh, in glucose and stress, adrenal steroids. And she taught me a lot. She explained that when your body is going through this glucose roller coaster, there is a certain amount of biological stress mm -hmm. yeah. that happens as a consequence. And that then impacts your, your hormonal axis, your thyroid axis, your adrenal axis. And that stress in and of itself can then lead to other problems in your body, whether it's mental health disturbances, whether it's inflammation, whether it's hormonal problems, because your body, like if you're stressed out, adrenals are stressed out, you're on a glucose roller coaster, your body doesn't think it's safe to conceive. So you have all these side effects of that stress, that biological stress that lead to downstream symptoms. And we need to look back at the fact that, yeah, that glucose roller coaster is causing stress on top of the inflammation and the glycation and the insulin release. Truly, I don't think there's a better place to start yeah. for your health. Like, it is truly the foundation. You cannot have a healthy body if you're on a glucose roller coaster. It's just not possible. You can manage, maybe. You can be a high-functioning glucose roller coaster, but it's just... It's just not going to work. You you need that baseline. I, I love that. There is there's a lot of people at the moment <laughs> who are high functioning glucose roller coasters, right? I love it. I love it. Yeah, but yeah. you walk around, you will see that, and mm -hmm. it it kind of will correlate with the eleven o'clock snack, yes, the extra coffee that's needed, the bit of chocolate to keep you going, the right? after dinner sugar, you know, the just scrolling on Instagram to reduce your stress. Like there's so many of our habits that could be linked to trying to function on a glucose roller coaster. And also most people don't know they're on a glucose roller coaster. So it's not their fault. They're trying their best. Yeah. They're trying to survive with all these symptoms, thinking the symptoms are normal, that if they can't handle them, they're weak or they don't have enough willpower or feeling ashamed or guilty. I want people to know that 
you can actually reduce their symptoms and they will go away. The first place to start is to steady your glucose levels. Yeah. And you'll have such a different experience of your life. Instead of feeling controlled by these impulses and these symptoms that you can't do anything about, you can become reconnected with your body, with yourself, and you know you can partner with your mitochondria. I mean, it's just a much more, it's a much nicer place to be. If you enjoyed that short clip, I think you are really going to enjoy the full conversation, which you can check out here.